Oh, hey guys, welcome back. Today's another baking video. I just want to show you the tree again because like, I mean, I have to. Whoa. Oh, love the tree, love Christmas. Oh my gosh. Okay, so today I'm going to be making Earl Grey cupcakes. This is one of my favorite cupcakes and it's also become a favorite of a lot of my coworkers. This recipe is kind of different where you actually need to prepare the night before. So in the first step, you're supposed to have a saucepan of milk. So about 120 mils and then three Earl Grey tea bags. I haven't tried using loose leaf tea with this recipe, but I'm sure you could also use that as well. There's no particular reason why I'm using twinning tea bags. It's just the one that's available to me and I've I've been using that bread for years. <laughs> in this recipe, it tells you to gently heat up the milk in the saucepan. You don't necessarily need to get those temperatures that high, just because throughout the night, the flavors will just be infused in the milk. So I'm doing between low to medium heat, and I like to personally stand by the stovetop just because I've had a lot of incidences where it's just boiled really quickly and I didn't notice. So I usually look for that light brown color to the milk, and then I kind of look to see if there's a little bit of steam. At that point, I take it off the heat. I let it cool down off to the side. And once it's cooled, I put it in the fridge. In the past, I have skipped this step. Like I've steeped it and then like it's probably been like maybe an hour or two and it's fine, but you really needed to sit just to get, you know, the flavors of the bergamot. And so I would definitely recommend this step. So yeah, here they are. They're doing just fine. I forgot to mention that this recipe for the most part relies on the weight of the ingredients. So you do need a kitchen scale. And then we're just gonna preheat our oven. It says 190 degrees Celsius, which is basically 375. So I'm gonna start with my mixing bowl here. Okay, we're starting with all purpose flours and we're measuring 120 grams. So we just zeroed out the scale and we're just gonna measure to 120. Then I'm just taking my granulated sugar here we're going to measure 140 grams the recipe calls for caster sugar now caster sugar is more refined than granulate gra oh my god granulated sugar so these crystals are a bit more coarse i've used granulated sugar and i've had fine results so just 140 one and a half teaspoons of baking powder I'm just putting a pinch of salt, guys. And then I have 40 grams of butter here. So at this point, you just mix it with a hand mixer. In my case, I'm using a paddle with my KitchenAid. I usually gravitate towards cupcake recipes that lead with creaming the butter and sugar together separately. With this recipe in the past, I've modified it where I've done that. So I'm just gonna stick with what the recipe is saying, which is flour, sugar, butter, baking powder, and salt together. And then we'll add the eggs and the steeped milk. So just in the KitchenAid here. Now we want breadcrumb consistency. And so I'm gonna start low to medium. Okay, now you're gonna grab your one egg, crack it into the bowl. Oh, see, and this is why I like to crack my eggs to the sides because there's always a chance a shell will drop in. Then you're gonna kind of whisk the egg. Okay, then you're taking your milk and we're just gonna pour the mixture over. Okay, and just to make sure all the flavor is in, you're taking your three tea bags and you're gonna squeeze the tea, trying to get the majority of the milk out. Do not throw these out yet. <laughs> I usually put it back in the pan. And we're basically going to put some milk here so we can use it for the buttercream. So the recipe says to put whole milk. I don't know guys, call me crazy, but I like using heavy cream or whipping cream. <laughs> and so we're just gonna pour that here. I think that when you mix buttercream with milk, it doesn't mix that well compared to when you use cream. Okay, so I'm just, sling them flat and then I'll just pop this in the fridge for now. So mixing the eggs and milk together here. On low speed, we're just gonna slowly add the mixture, slowly increasing it to a medium speed. Okay guys. Remember the time I said earlier in this video that I usually do the sugar and butter together first? I feel like I should have done that again because I feel like there's like chunks of butter. Don't do that. Maybe cream the butter first. <laughs> so there's some lumps, but we're going to ignore that. But ultimately you do want a smooth mixture. For the most part, it does look okay. You can see some butter chunks. It'll be fine, guys. Okay, so we're going to fill these so they're about half full. Okay. 
okay, this is kind of really turned into a real disaster because there's definitely not enough batter for 12. <laughs> Okay, we got nine. We got nine. Alrighty, let's put them in. So we're gonna leave these for 18 to 20 minutes. And I'm really hoping guys that they turn out okay. <laughs> the butter didn't mix properly. I should have creamed it with the sugar first. And there's nine. Maybe, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Maybe because I didn't cream the butter and sugar together, there was less air incorporated in the beginning and therefore it led to less volume. The incorporation of air is key to, you know, baking any kind of cake. So I have a feeling, even though there's baking powder, it might be dense. Oh, set a timer for 16 minutes. Oh my god, this is so okay. I forgot to put the timer. I was just like talking. Okay, I did 16 minutes because I feel like I, would, I talked for a minute or two. I don't know. Are you too hot? Oh my god. I think you're too hot. Okay, so once they're done, I'll take them out. And then fingers crossed they're okay, guys. Okay, it's been about 18 minutes, so I'm just gonna take them out. They look pretty good, but I just obviously need to test the middle. Again, I'm just grabbing a fork, putting it in the biggest one. Again. So they're actually fine, okay. So again, I'm just, I'm just taking them out. But I mean, here they are, guys. Um, even with all those mishaps, they did rise, you know, properly. And so I'm, I'm very pleased. <laughs> you should always wait for your cupcakes to cool before putting any buttercream. So we'll wait about a half an hour and then we'll mix the buttercream and then we'll be done. Okay guys, Oop. so it's been about half an hour. They're not quite, um, cool enough, but I just thought I would start on the buttercream. So any buttercream you want to start with room temperature butter. I have my scale off to the side here. I'm just doing 160 grams. So just adding the butter to the mixer. I always like mixing the butter first just so it's easier for the icing sugar to mix in. So let's do that now. Again, we're just scraping the edges. So the recipe does call for 500 grams of icing sugar. So this bag, luckily, is 500 grams. Again, I never use all the sugar. And also this recipe, if you put too much sugar, it does get too sweet. So like more than ever with this recipe, I always make sure that I'm only adding little by little. So let's do that now. Okay, and then we're going to squeeze the tea bags and put the heavy cream in. So just over the mix here. So I forgot to mention, we're about um, half of the icing sugar. I did a taste, it does need a little bit more, so we're just gonna add it now. Okay, I'm just gonna taste again. Do you know what guys, I think we're there. We just used a little more than a half of the sugar. And then I'm just grabbing a piping bag here, taking our buttercream and just putting it in the bag. So just folding the ends like this. I am using a Wilton Star Tip 1M right over there in the bag, cutting the end, pushing it through, and I'm just putting this clip just to hold it in place. Okay, so just taking a spatula and just putting it in here. And then we're just going to push the buttercream to the end of the piping bag. And then we're just gonna twist the end here. You can see I took the clip off and as we twist, the buttercream will reach the end. So we're still twisting. I guess we'll start. This is so exciting. Okay, are we gonna make it guys? We're kind of running out. <laughs> oh my God, we made it. Okay, good thing there's only nine. Wow. Oh my God, they look so good. Oh my God, they look so good. Oh my gosh, I can't handle how cute. Look at these. Oh my gosh, okay. So I was kind of panicking guys because you know, the batter was a little clumpy. There was a lot less, but yeah, I'm really curious. Let's go cut into one. Now, weirdly enough guys, I do like when these these are 
like after they're refrigerated. I think there's more flavors that come out. I think sometimes it's more flavorful. Uh, I'm just cutting it through. Okay, and actually guys, the sponge looks really good. It doesn't look too bad. And the taste test. Oh my god, I love these cupcakes so much. Wow, I'm shocked. The cake actually turned out. Okay, I'm actually so happy. Like, I really thought they didn't turn out, but like, look at these. Oh, I'm really excited. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. I don't know what I'm baking next. Yeah, I have no idea, guys. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye! <laughs>